There have been calls for police reform from around the country, sparked by the death of George Floyd and from federal officers being sent to multiple cities in America. Today, several members of Congress are set to advance a plan to get unidentified federal law enforcement officers banned from participating in control of some of these protests. Joining us this morning to talk about this and everything we've been seeing developing in recent days, Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici from the 1st District of Oregon. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Emily and Jenny, for having me on the show. Such an important conversation we're having. Absolutely. I'm interested in your take on a lot of things here, but first we want to start with the, the details of this new amendment. Specifically, what are you proposing? Sure. Well, what we're doing is we're using the budget process to rein in and ban this improper behavior that we've seen and heard about from so many Oregonians. Now, first of all, I want to say that I have called for these additional uh, uh, Trump administration uh, troops to leave Portland because they are not making our community safer. And we've heard from and seen the stories of so many people who have been gassed or beaten uh, or uh, had their rights violated by these, uh, by these troops. So we're using the budget process to make sure if there are people there, uh, federal uh, agents there, they have to be identified which is so important for accountability, and they need to have the proper education and training. Uh, we haven't seen that with the, the forces that are there. They're militaristic. They are not making our community safer. We all want the violence to stop, and we all want to get back to the real message of what we need to do to address systemic racism. And I have to say, this: the sending in of these federal troops by the administration has, has been in large part uh, because the president has so woefully failed to address the coronavirus pandemic. And it is distracting not only from uh, the coronavirus pandemic, but from the legitimate message that Black Lives Matter and we need reform to address systemic racism. Yeah, and so how, how would it be upheld, though, if it is passed? Well, it's part of the budget process. And what, what it basically says is budget can, uh, federal funds cannot be used for these purposes. Uh, so that's what it does. It goes after the budget process to say that if there are uh, federal people there, they have to have training, they have to be educated, they have to be identified. But again, we are, I certainly have called from the beginning, hopeful that uh, the federal troops get out uh, let our Oregon forces take care of safety around the building. We all want the violence to stop. I definitely want people in, in Portland and in Oregon to be safe. And the additional troops that the administration sent, as we have seen, are not making people safe. I really appreciate it. I watched your series of interviews with veterans who were there last night. We've seen you know, veterans and moms and dads and professors and doctors uh, step up and say, we have a right to peacefully protest. And this, the, the troops have been a big distraction from that. Now we have seen so many more people coming into these protests. Uh, the federal response became a little more heavy handed. Uh, Congresswoman, I'm interested kind of in your reaction to uh, just what we've seen in the last 24 hours even and, and how we could potentially wind this down. We're getting different messages from state and local leaders uh, compared to what we're hearing from the federal government. Just a few minutes ago, the president tweeted this morning, Oregon Governor Kate Brown is not doing her job. And if Oregon can't clean this up, the federal government will come in and do it for her. So uh, just how, how do we resolve this? How do we de-escalate from here? Well, thank you, and I absolutely disagree with the president and, and, and that tweet. They haven't given the, fed, the state uh, uh, officials the opportunity to do the job. They have increased tensions, increased violence when we really need to de-escalate. So those additional federal forces need to leave. And as we've seen this morning, as you just have shown, uh, the governor has asked the Oregon State Police to come in. We need to have conversations with people on the ground there, the leaders of the movements, of the Black Lives Matter movement, and involve the community in the conversation about how do we get the message out. Uh, but it is clear, and I can't say this strongly enough, people are protesting police brutality. 
the response to that cannot be more police brutality. And that's why we have seen so many more people protesting, which they have the right to do. Uh, I don't want any more people to be hurt. I want the violence to stop. We need to work together. Let the, the people in Oregon protect their community uh, and keep people safe. Yeah, real quickly, I want to get your reaction to to something else President Trump tweeted this morning. Uh, he was talking about vote by mail and how it's going to lead to all this fraud. And he actually floated the idea of delaying the November election. What's your reaction to that? He can't delay the election. He doesn't have the power to do that. Um, and we know as Oregonians that vote by mail works. It's a safe system. It's a secure system. I mean, good grief, the president himself votes by mail. So the, the fact that he is trying to use, again, a distraction to take attention away from his failed leadership in managing the coronavirus uh, pandemic and his failed leadership in, in addressing systemic racism, uh, he, he comes up with a distraction and a deflection. He can't postpone the election that won't happen. Okay. And Oregonians, we know vote by mail works. Yes. All right. Well, Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us this morning and, and talking yeah. about all of the, the various issues that we have going on right now. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much.